Hello everyone, thanks for joining me today. I'm Jan Clothier of Thinking Stamping and I'm an independent stamping up demonstrator from New Zealand. And today I'm going to share with you how I made this card, which I made in response to a sketch challenge actually at Kaz Colours and Sketches, which is a, a favourite challenge side of mine, although I don't get to play there very often anymore. But um, they had a, a lovely sketch and I like the fact that they focus on clean and simple, so actually I probably went a little bit far. It's probably not quite as clean and simple as I'd have liked, but I think it's got an overall clean look and I enjoyed making it, so I thought I'd share with you today day how I did it. So I, I've i got the Painted Lavender stamp set here because I used the Painted Lavender bundle, although the plain fact is I really didn't use any stamps out of it, although I could have for the inside. What I really used were the Painted Lavender dies. And like most Stampin' Up! sets, there are stamps which cut outlines of, oh sorry, there are dies which cut outlines of most of the stamped images. But there's a whole lot of other stuff which is not in the stamp set and so the two that I've used are um, this foliage and this stem here which cuts two beautiful two of these beautiful um, lavenders um, in one pass so I've used those and I have cut them out of watercolour paper and I just used the Fluid 100 watercolour paper and although you can cut into a new sheet I mean I keep all my scraps and off cuts and so really I cut myself I have cut two of these although I've already coloured one and I cut myself, well obviously I had to cut four because they cut two at once. I have cut myself four of those out of Fluid 100 watercolour paper scraps. Um, and I am going to show you how I coloured them as well. So we'll be doing that shortly, but I'll show you what else we need in terms of paper. Um, so we get going. Now as we go through, if you see anything that I use today and you'd like to add that to your craft stash and you live in New Zealand, then you're welcome to shop with me. And there's a link to my online store in the video description below or in the end cards which are going to pop up at the end of the video. So, watercolour paper to cut two of those and two of those. Now you can see that I've used this lovely postage stamp die, which is one of the um, perennial postage stamps, and I've used the largest of those for that. Now because that is an unusual size for a New Zealand card base. I have had to cut my card base because I wanted it to, to just have an even space all the way around. I have had to cut my, my card um, different to how I normally do. So I have got a card base of thick white cardstock. And although it's still the same width as usual, 21 centimetres, which is the width of an A4 piece of card and scored at 10 and a half, I have cut it at 13.8 rather than 14.8, which is my normal um, height for a card. I imagine if you're dealing in Imperial, then these, these are probably made for Imperial, so they probably work pretty well. I, I'm sorry, I can't really help you on that. You'll need to work it out with the die. So I've also now got a mat of gorgeous grape, and that is half a centimetre or quarter of an inch smaller again than the card front. So it's 13.3 by 10, and that's going to go there. And then you also need another piece of white that is... Um, that is the same size as that, so 10 by 13.8. But what you're going to do with that is you're going to cut out the um, cut it out with the largest of these postage stamp dies from perennial postage, and you'll get that shape, which is going to mat perfectly onto that. Um, I've got a scrap of Fresh Freesia and I have already stamped that up and cut it. So the way I've done that is I used um, something fancy. I just used the Happy Birthday and the little parallelogram uh, die there, which you'll have seen me use a million times before because it is one of my most used dies. And so I've just cut that out of Fresh Freesia to use later. And what else do we need? Oh, for the inside, I have cut a piece of gorgeous grape, which is t uh, 10 by 13.3. And then I've cut a piece half a centimetre smaller to meet into it. So I think that that would be 9.5 by 12.8. That's for the inside. So we'll just pop that aside for later. Now, the very first thing I'm going to do is show you how I watercolored the flowers so that they can be um, off quietly drying while we do the rest. So um, I start off, I've got, my, I've got my microfiber cloth to just help protect my work surface. I'm going to start with a flower. I have in fact already done two, so I saved one just to show you how I do it. Now, when I'm stamping, I know a lot of people just put their ink onto the lid of their ink pad, but 
I don't I just don't like that I I just find it messy so I don't like it so I use an acrylic block and I just ink up the acrylic put some ink onto the acrylic block that is fresh freesia but I equally as well could have used Highland Heather and I'm going to use just a touch of a gorgeous grape and I'm going to use just a touch of when I can lay my hands on it Ah, Lost Lagoon. Okay, so I've got those three colours. I'm going to use my water painters and away I go. Now, um, because I actually don't want the green to, to use to move very much, I am going to do something I don't normally do. I'm going to apply the ink before I wet the paper because I actually don't want this ink moving very much. I want it to stay put on the little bits that are the stems. So I'm just going to paint that with a bit of Lost Lagoon and I want it to, as I say, not be moving around the paper. Now I'm just going to get rid of that off my brush, clean it, and now I'm going to wet over the flowers because Normally when I'm watercolouring, the first thing I do is just wet the entire surface because I want the ink to move and blend and that's not going to happen if the paper is dry. Okay, so I've wet that. Now I'm going to just do like an undercoat. I'm just going to go over with Fresh Freesia, the lightest colour, all over everything. And, you know, I'm not even attempting to be even. I don't want it to be even. If I wanted it to be even, I'd have just used Fresh Freesia card. Now, I'm going to go in here with a little bit of, just ink it up a little bit with some water. And I'm just going to drop it in. And what I hope is that the paper is going to be wet enough that it will just run and blend in with the Fresh Freesia. And, you know, I'm aiming for a very loose kind of impressionistic effect. Um, and then I can just, if I want to make it run a bit more, I can just run over it with my wet brush and, you know, only the ink that's on there. And then that will dry and give me a lovely lavender stem. Now, what I'm going to do with the um, foliage... Well, there's two things I could do. I could use exactly the same method um, as I've done with that, because I have already got some ink there. And I'll start off with just wetting everything. Or I could use just some uh, ink from a reinker. So we'll just see how we go, since I've already got some ink there. We'll start with that. And we'll just run it over. Again, I'm going for a loose effect. I, you know, I don't want it looking absolutely perfect. I just want it looking... Like a leaf in nature, you know, I don't want it all exactly uniformly even. I want it to look like, um, you know, like the sun is dappling on it, like there are shady bits and darker bits and more dried out bits and fresh and newer growth. You know, I want it to look uneven. So I'm just being a little bit willy nilly uh, on how I'm going here. And it's a little bit hard to tell on the background too because with the, um, the cloth and all the mess it's a little bit hard to see what's going on. So sometimes you have to just move it to get a better picture and then you can just do any little bits of alteration that you like. Okay, squeeze out my brush and clean it and I think we're pretty much done with that. So remember I've cut two, two of the foliages and four of the flowers, I have only coloured three. I probably should have done the fourth one, but I haven't. So we will leave those there to dry. And we shall carry on with the rest of our card. Okay, move the dies out of the way so I don't lose them. Okay, where's our stuff? Right, the rest of the card's actually pretty simple. There's just one other little thing we're going to do. And that is, we're going to take this postage stamp and we're going to cut it in half. Now I'm going to use my paper trimmer on this. And 
what I'm aiming to do is I'm aiming to have the point of the corners lined up exactly in the cutting track because that's exactly where it's going to cut. So I'm lining up the corners, the corners, and when I'm happy that the corners are in fact sitting exactly in the track, oh, movement, I'm then going to cut them in half and give myself two equal pieces. And then I am going to get the exposed brick 3D folder and I'm going to take the top section and pop it in there, line it up straight and pop it through the machine. So I'm going to end up with this. I'm going to end up with one half embossed and one half plain. And those pieces I'm going to line up here onto my purple mat. Hopefully. Okay, now because this is a textured surface, I am going to perhaps use a wee bit more glue than I normally would. But I don't want it too thick close to the edges because I do not want it oozing everywhere. So, I'm going to pop that in there. And then I'm very quickly going to get the other half. And line it up. And I still got some wiggle jiggle room to just get it nice and even. Okay, and then I can attach that to the card front. Here we go. And now the fun bit, which is doing the flower arranging. So I've got my two pieces of Lost Lagoon foliage, which I'm just going to glue on. Now, I'm not going to glue them within an inch of their life because I want some lift so that, you know, they're not dead flat on the page. I want them to have a bit more life and energy about them than that. So I've just glued down the centre. And I'm just going to attach that. Now, I normally, I you know, when I first done this, I, I had a bit of a play around with the arrangement that I liked. And, you know, and I, I fiddled around until I liked the arrangement before I start gluing. Now, obviously, because I've already made this card, I've already done that bit. But when you're making it, you might want to have a little play around before you start blithely gluing stuff on as I'm doing. You might want to just have a wee play around and just make sure that you're happy with you know where things are going to end up before you do anything as permanent as attaching. Okay, so same thing. I'm just going to, I'm not going to glue it within an inch of its life. I'm just going to do some bits down the centre. And then I'm going to place it. Now, I deliberately did not glue right at the bottom of this piece because at the end, there's going to be a little bit of trimming. So I didn't want to glue right at the very end because I knew. Experience told me that I was going to have to just trim just a little bit at the end. So... Pop him in. Okay. And now we shall do the aforementioned trimming. We shall just so that glue has to attach onto, you know, because there is only a little bit of glue and it does need to attach onto a, an uneven surface. So you might just have to, as I did there, give it a wee bit more of a press. Okay, we're moving along. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take some of the Simply Elegant trim 
and make ourselves a silver bow. Now I'm going to take about 25 centimetres. Whoops, because I like to not have to fumble around and I like to have a bit of an elegant swish of a tail. So I'm, I'm always going to err on the side of having a lot of twine rather than less twine. Whoops. And I've even got myself in a mess with that. Maybe I should have given myself 30 centimetres. Anyway, we shall do a bit of a bow. And then we'll just get a glue dot. And pop that on there. And I'm going for a bit of an angle because I want the happy birthday, whoops, which is resisting being picked up, okay, over the top. Now, there's quite a bit of fatness in that centre, because there's layer, there's the stems and there's the bow, and the sentiment is going to arch over the top of it, so for that reason, I'm only going to put dimensionals at the end, because there's already enough uh, in the middle to support the sentiment. So off with off with your heads. And we shall line that up. And when we're happy that it's straight, just give those dimensionals a little press. Now I don't mind that length, but perhaps I'll just trim it just a tiny bit. So you can trim your bow then to the length that you would like it to be. Now, the only other thing is the inside, and what I did with the inside here, you know, we've got sitting over here ready at the go our gorgeous great mat, a piece of white, and what I did with this was I did I did colour the fourth um, the fourth watercoloured piece, and I just glued it in. What I, I could equally have used some of the stamps out of here and, and stamped inside. So, you know, when you get up to that bit, you know, you, you're free to choose whatever you'd like to put on the inside. In fact, I often say to my class people, you know, the inside is where you can have a good experiment at things. Anyway, that's my um, my my watercoloured lavender happy birthday. Um, if you have any questions, I am always happy to answer questions and I can be read through the contact details in the video description below and in the end card that's about to pop up. Uh, if you've seen anything that you want to add to your craft stash and you live in New Zealand, don't forget you can shop with me. And again, the links are in the video description below and in the end card. If you've liked what you've seen and you haven't subscribed, please do so so you don't miss anything new that I do. And above all else, everyone, happy stamping.